Hello, my name is Peter Knapp. I would like to talk to you about log reviewing made easy. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a log row, how it works and why it's different from the built-in log summary. Also, I'd like to show you how to tailor a macro for your specific needs. And one of the keys here is that anything that appears in the log can be captured and printed in a log report. So my log report identifies instances of keywords that can be indicative of run problems, and it also is going to show the flow of data through the program. So a little background about myself. I support a bunch of trade analysts who use SAS in order to calculate tariffs, but for the most part, they don't have any kind of programming background. And because when they run programs and often there is output generated, they tend not to, they, they tend to jump to the output and not uh, look at the log. So one of the, the rules, one of the, the lessons that I really try to impart upon them is that it's always, always, always important to review the log for problems. The built-in so uh, log summary, it's really easy to find syntax errors and also warnings, but it's not as good at identifying other instances where there could be problems. And what I mean by that is things like uninitialized variables or missing values or repeats of by variables. So here's an example program. And I know that there are problems with the program, and that's by design so that I can, I can show um, how to look at the built-in log summary, and then later how to look at the log report. So this program has an uninitialized variable, a syntax error, and it also has a warning. So when I run the program, here's a look at the log. And I apologize if the slide is a little bit on the blurry side, you'll have uh, be able to look at this uh, on your own later. So with syntax errors, the total number of syntax errors are displayed in the error tab. They're also listed in the description section and then, of course, down in the log, which is great. We always, always, always want to clean up our syntax errors. Similarly, warnings are displayed, the total number in the warning tab, they're listed in the description section, and then they're also displayed down in the log. And of course, the same is true of the notes. But unlike the syntax errors and the warnings, which yes, pay attention to those, you figure out what's going on, there are seven notes here. And though some of the notes are perfectly good, some of them are indicative of problems. So you would actually have to read all the individual notes to find out, hey, something's up, I, I need to look at this. Let me swap over to SAS enterprise guide so that you can see uh, this in action. I've run the program in advance, but here's the program that was on the slide. If I go to the log, here are the tabs. If I click on this little down arrow, then um, you can see it, in, it shows you the notes and I'm having trouble with uh, finding the error right now. I apologize for that. Let, Oops. Let me show you the uh, note. So oh, there's the error. So if you click on the description, it will actually highlight the warning. So that, like I said, this is a great tool for debugging errors and warnings, but not necessarily for the notes because it just lists the notes. It doesn't make any uh, indication that, hey, this is a note to pay attention to versus a note not to pay attention to. All righty. Uh, in SAS Studio, I wanted to show you what the log looks like. And as an aside, before I started working on this presentation, I would never use SAS Studio before. I was definitely a SAS Enterprise person. And while visually there are differences and functionally there are a few changes between the two, SAS Studio is really not hard to pick up once. Um, you play with it a little bit. And what's really cool about it is that you can access it using a web browser as opposed to needing to have a piece of software loaded on your computer. So very similar to what we saw in SAS Enterprise Guide, 
the total number of errors are explained are displayed in the section in the uh, error section along with the actual error message. So the order is a little bit different. And then down below in the log itself is the error, similar to the warnings and similar to the notes. Yet again, it's listing all seven notes and you would need to go through each note in order to figure out which note to pay attention to. Just really briefly, I'm going to go to SAS Studio to show you what that looks like. Again, it's very similar to SAS Enterprise Guide. Here's the program, here's the log, and this time, if I wanna see the log as opposed to tabs, it's a little arrow, it's like, okay, there's one error, and if I click on that, it jumps down to that error, excuse me, in the log, which is great. Same with the warning, so it's great. Um, the notes, well, there are lots of notes. And of course, this is a tiny little program. In reality, the programs, at least that are used in my shop, are thousands of lines of code, and therefore there are thousands of notes. Well, maybe not thousands, but there are hundreds of notes um, to, to slog through to figure out, oh, okay, this one is important. Variable I N D O I C is uninitialized. Whereas this one, hey, you know, there are 147 observations in the CARS data set. Uh, not as much of an issue. All right, back to the presentation. So I've already talked about this a little bit. The log summary is, is, is great for those um, errors and those warnings, and it does show you the notes, but um, you really need to look at everything. So I came up with a log report that identifies specific kinds of notes that are indicative of program run. And therefore, you don't have to review every note to, to see whether your program is working. And it's a huge, huge time saver. Also, relating this back to my shop, because these trade analysts need to, no, don't need to, well, yes, they do. These trade analysts you know, struggle with programming, making, giving them a tool that, that makes it easier for them to review the log is is a win and we use it all the time also that log report can be enhanced to include information about the number of observations flowing through the program which i will get to so how do you create a log report macro the key to this is to reroute the desk the log from the destination log to an external file run your program all that code all our it gets thrown into the log along with the notes and the warnings and the error messages, reset that log destination back to the, the default, and then run the log re report macro, which is going to go grab that file, go line by line by line, and interpret it. So let me talk a little bit about the specifics. You need to tell SAS where to send the the log to and it's a file name statement which is very straightforward it defines external file and path and there's an example on the slide we're a little fancier in that we are dynamically defining that external file which basically we're capturing the location of the program that we're running along with the name of the program and swapping out the dot .sas suffix with the uh, dot .log suffix. And the key to this is a, an automatic macro variable called underscore sas program file. A few other things in order to get that file statement to work, just briefly, in case you're not familiar with it, the uh, sas macro facility but the base, sorry, base SAS has lots and lots of functions. It's, it's, it's really very nice. SAS macro, not as many functions, but there is a macro function that allows you to use regular SAS functions, and that's the sysfunc, percent sysfunc function. So I'm using that in order to be, have access to the transword macro or function and uh, will um, 
basically swap out the dot sass uh, and replace it with dot log. Alrighty, the next step is to use proc print to and says, hey, take the log and send it to the file reference, which was defined previously. The new says, hey, if um, it doesn't exist, create it. If it does, overwrite it. So here's that example program again. So you run the program. Then you use the proc print to, to redirect the uh, log to, um, sorry, after you run, after you do that, you uh, use proc print to, to re redirect the, the default log destination back to the log. And then you run the log report macro. And there are six pieces to that. It copies the save log of, to the default log destination, reads that save log, looks for the keywords. In this case, it does some accumulation, which I'm going to show you in a moment, saves those keyword totals into macro variable, and then finally it writes the uh, keyword totals to the log report. So what do we want to, uh, let me go into the nitty gritty of the macro for you. All macros start with a percent macro statement. Then as a data null, because I don't need to actually create a SAS data set, and it's like, hey, I'm going to be reading in from an external file because I'm using an input statement without any argument. It just grabs the whole record. And then I'm uh, putting it back into the log so you actually have um, the results of the program so that you can see it. Then I read in that save log. And again, it's a, a data null statement. Uh, this time I'm creating one variable, which is called line with a length of 250 characters. And there are a couple of options to make sure that it reads in properly. Uh, the missover won't go to a new line if they're less than 250 characters and it pads anything less than 250 characters with a space. Also the end of the option says, hey, um, here at the end of at the last record in the input file. So this is kind of the heart of it. Once I've read in that line of, of the log, I'm using some additional logic to accumulate instances of the, the word that I'm interested in, for instance, error or warning or uninitialized. So the error statement in, in the log appears uh, in the first six characters of the, the line. So I'm just using the substring function. And the same with the warning, whereas the term uninitialized can appear, can appear anywhere in the note. So um, instead of using a substring function, I'm using an index function. And if it finds any one of these instances, it uses then a SAS accumulator um, to increment a variable, a variable error, variable warning, variable uninit. Once I have that information, I want to store the results of those accumulators. And there's a great way within the context of a data step to create macro variables, which is the call input x routine and just very simply in quotes you put the name of the macro variable you're creating and then the second parameter is the value that you want uh, sas to store in that macro variable and then the payoff and this is very old school i started using sas back in the mid 1980s and one of the ways to generate reports was to use percent put and percent put will stick in the log anything that you want. So there are a couple bunch of percent put statements that indicate, hey, um, you know, SAS, general SAS alerts determine cause, non-zero instances, and then uh, just there is the uh, resolution of the macro variables that I'm throwing in the macro variables with the ampersand error. So let me show you the results in the and the log of the log report run macro, and I'm actually gonna go back and show it to you in a SAS Enterprise Guide. 
the first, and I apologize that I know that there's a lot of information on the slide and it's very small, but again, you're gonna have access to this slide after the fact. So um, you'll be able to increase it and read it. So the first bit copies the saved log to the default log destination, and then it reads that actual site saved log. The next piece is going to reroute the log to the back to its default destination. And then kind of the heart of this macro is going to use conditional logic um, to read it. Well, it's going to read in each line of the log and take a look and use conditional logic to see whether there are instances of problematic words. Uh, then one thing, percent puts don't appear in the log. So this shot here doesn't show the actual percent puts but it actually shows the log report. And that those last, I guess, six, six lines of the log report, that's the key, that's, or that, that, that's what I have the trade analysts look for when they run their programs. Let me, before I show enhance the log report, let me go, I'm gonna go to SAS Enterprise Guide and just show you what I'm talking about. So again, here's the program. I've run it previously. Oops, I guess I have not run it. I apologize. This should only take a moment and I'm not going to run this. So I, uh, let me see whether I can do it in SAS Studio. And if I can't do it in SAS Studio, then we're just going to move on. This one is working. Yay. See, another reason to use SAS Studio. So there's the, uh, the log report in action. Um, and I can't impress upon you guys enough that how valuable this tool is in my shop, not so much because of the errors and the warnings, but because it does things like tells the, the, the trade analysts, hey, you have uninitialized variables. They get results. A lot of them have this tendency to jump for, to the results and take a look and say, oh, I'm, I've got results, I'm done, yay. Mm -mm. They gotta gotta clean up this stuff. And of course, this is just a demo. So all of those problematic words that potentially problematic words that appear in the notes, um, I'm only showing you the uninitialized. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. And in addition to trying to, or not trying to, but in addition to finding instances of errors and warnings and problematic notes, you can also enhance the log report, like I said earlier, to capture anything that appears in the log. Now, what I'm doing here is I want to say, okay, we, we, we want to track the flow of the data. If we have, you know, see how many observations are going into the process and then how many observations are going out of the process. So, excuse me, um, here's a little sample program. And the idea here is it grabs the cars data set from the SAS help library and it keeps using a subsetting if statement, it keeps only those cars originating from the U in the US. And it's um, functionally, it's the same kind of code that I had sh I've already shown you for purposes of debugging. Um, but in this instance, it's, I'm going to be using PROC SQL. In, and PROC SQL is really, really slick for capturing the total number of observations in a data set. So the first PROC SQL says, hey, from the data set SAS helped a car count all the observations and then put them into a macro variable, um, which in this case is going to be called count cars. So it's just, it's one, two, three, four, five lines of code and you, you know how many observations you have in the data set. And then the second property S SQL does the same thing, but this time it's for the result of that little data set that I ran, the, the temporary work.cars data set. And then again, just using those percent put statements in order to actually write the information to the bottom of the log. And here you can see it in action. It's, it's very similar to the, 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 the part of the macro that I demoed previously to show you, hey, how to capture those, those, uh, those errors, warnings, and, and problematic notes.
So in conclusion, I want to reiterate that the log summary is a great way to identify errors and warnings. But in my view, the notes, it's not as good because it doesn't, doesn't highlight notes that are, can be indicative of problems. So in addition to using the log summary for debugging purposes, we developed a log report that identifies specific kinds of notes that are indicative of the problems. And then like I showed you with the enhancements of the log report, you can capture any information that appears in the log and report on it. In this instance, in that example, it was, hey, how many observations were from the permanent data set and how many observations were saved in the temporary data set. Here are a couple of references. The SAS documentation is actually really, really, really good. And I recommend it. It's real easy to get to. Also, last year at the Southeast SAS Users Group, I presented a paper, or they published a paper, I should say, because the, the conference got canceled about log reviewing made easy. And this presentation is in, based on that. It's enhanced a bit. I would also like to thank my colleague, Gadish Narandias, for who adapted and improved the log report macro that I originally wrote um, so that it would work in Enterprise Guide. And I would also like to thank Wendy Reeves of the SAS Institute, who did a beautiful job designing slides to show off the content that I um, came up with. Thank you. Here are my uh, contact information, and I'm more than happy to discuss the log report. I'd be happy to send you the, the full log report that we use in my shop. Uh, Again, thank you very much.